family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And today we're going to talk about the top mistakes that people make when they get started on keto. And we'll talk about it right, right after, after this. this. So when I got started on keto, I definitely made some mistakes that made it much more difficult to transition into the keto lifestyle. Yes. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the top mistakes that people make when they first get started. Hopefully we will save people some frustration. That's our goal. Yeah. So how about I start? Consuming products that are labeled sugar free. Ooh, sugar free. That's a dangerous catchphrase. Yeah. You go to the store, you see like, you know, branches, sugar free candies. And you're like, oh, it's sugar free. I can eat it. And you don't look at the nutritional label and you forget that maltitol, maltodextrin, and all of those things are actually worse for you than regular sugar yeah. and will skyrocket your blood glucose. Yeah. You don't want to consume that. <laughs> yeah. So eat whole foods, avoid all those products that are labeled sugar free. Yeah. What do you got? Okay, so my first one would be don't compare the way you spent your day before keto to the way you're going to spend your day now after keto. So um, you probably go to the same job since starting this diet, and you probably have still like a nine to five work schedule, and you may have a non-negotiable lunch period. Maybe from one to two, everybody goes to lunch, and that's not an option. However... Um, you don't have to spend your lunch hour eating just because everybody else is ready to eat at one o'clock. If you are fat adapted and you feel good and you're not hungry, don't eat. Use that time to answer emails, run to the store and run an errand that you, you would normally do after work and just plan on you know, maybe eating some breakfast, if that will sustain you, and then no, don't eat again until you get home at five o'clock. Just because it is a lunch period doesn't mean that you have to be eating during that. Sounds good. I like that. I yeah. mean, you can even use it to track your macros for the next day. That's a great idea. Next one would be comparing your results to somebody else's results. Oh, wow, I did that a lot. So I know when we first got started, you quit because you were comparing your results to my results. You lost a ton of pounds. I lost like over 20 pounds in the first three weeks. You weren't losing a lot of weight. So instead of comparing your results to somebody else's results, because your body is different than somebody yes. else's body, women are different than men, you know, each woman is different. Yep. Instead of comparing your results to somebody else, Compare your results to yourself. Yes. So instead of worrying about the scale, take pictures, mm -hmm. measure yourself, yes. and compare yourself to where you were when you started to where you were, where you are now and yes. along the way. I have to admit, I mean, I've lost almost 90 pounds on keto over 18 months. Can we get a picture of you before? Yeah, I can put one up here. Just to remind you. And I still to this day, Having gone from that to this and having gone from a size 44 to wearing a size 30 pant, Huge. I look at myself in the mirror still and I see the 270 pound person that I was 18 months ago. That makes me sad. Because I don't see the visual differences. It's a mental thing. For it me. is. And it's not until I look at pictures of myself mm -hmm. where I see, wow, I see the change. Big change. So take photos along your journey, measure yourself along the journey, and use that for comparison instead of comparing your results to somebody else's. Because you're going to get really frustrated if... You know somebody who's done keto when they lost 80 pounds over six months or over a year and you only lost 20. Yeah. Worry about your own results. Yeah. Um, okay, I have another one. Electrolytes and keeping your electrolytes up and the focus on electrolytes, it's, it's not just after the keto flu subsides that you don't have to worry about electrolytes anymore. It is a consistent thing. You need to be conscious of your... Uh, what you're drinking, make sure you're not just drinking a ton of water and flushing out all of your electrolytes without replacing them. You need um, your potassium and you need just sodium. You need that either the pink salt or the sea salt. 
Um, that is always going to be something that you're going to need to be conscious of. Otherwise, you are not going to feel optimal. I think that's the biggest mistake people make on keto is not getting enough electrolytes. Whenever somebody tells me like, hey, I'm having headaches, I'm having dizzy, I'm getting muscle cramps, it's almost always electrolyte related. Yeah. So make sure you're taking your salt, get yourself some Ultima, use Zip Fizzes, mm -hmm. check the carbs on them. Like Zip Fizz has two carbs in them. I am willing to sacrifice those two carbs yeah. because of the amount of electrolytes and if I'm outside running around, mm -hmm. but you can get it from spinach, from avocados, you know, any of your leafy cruciferous vegetables, but that's really important. It's usually one of the biggest reasons people quit keto is because they're feeling crappy and usually their feeling crappy is the result of a lack of electrolytes. Yeah, it's not the food. So the next mistake people make is not consuming enough fat. This is true. It is still a challenge for us to get into that mindset that like fat is good for us and we need to consume a lot of it. We want to, you know, we want to go back to that way of thinking of fat is bad. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, people look at the keto lifestyle. You have to remember the keto diet is high fat, moderate protein, low carb. High fat, meaning anywhere between 65 to 85 percent of your calories should be coming from fat, yeah. and it, that number is all gonna depend on what makes you feel best. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what happens is people think like, well, if I'm trying to lose fat, why should I eat fat? Right, I want I want the this to, to consume my fat, but you've gotta prime the pump, right? Like, you can't give it no fat. Especially in the beginning. In the beginning, you're trying to get your body fat adapted. So what you wanna do is make sure you're eating all of that fat, because that fat is gonna satiate you. Yes. It's gonna give you all of the cognitive function because your body is converting that fat into ketones. It's what's gonna get you from one meal to the next meal. So if you're trying to lose weight, you don't wanna cut back on the fat. Yeah. What you wanna do is cut back on the calories. So for example, if I'm supposed to eat 2,000 calories a day to maintain my weight, I want to drop my calories to like 1,750 so I can lose weight, but I'm still going to maintain that 70% fat. So next one. I think the next one would be don't overdo the sweets. Now I actually grew up not having dessert. That wasn't something we had every single night. And yet once I got into this keto lifestyle, I started incorporating desserts into my everyday life. So I actually made a habit I didn't need to have because the keto recipes were there. I thought, well, this will make me feel better about myself if I like get dessert every single night, you know, some somehow justifying some of the, the way that we were eating. So um, I don't need to justify the way we are eating by making sure I incorporate desserts and lots of sweets really into good. my life. I would, in the beginning, skip the keto cookies, the yes. keto brownies, the keto cakes, and allow yourself to get completely fat adapted and not worry about those things because yeah. all you're really doing is refeeding that sugar addiction with an alternative. Right. And it's not going to get rid of the cravings. If you get rid of the cravings, then at later on you can add in a little bit because the bottom line is a keto brownie is not taste the same as a chocolate thunder from down under at no. Outback Steakhouse. No, so you're gonna com constantly compare it and that is going to prolong your frustration and your thinking that like, boy, I don't get something else. Yeah, I would say the biggest mistake that people make is over consuming hidden carbs. Yes. That's a huge problem. So we need to remember that there are hidden carbs in some products. So a lot of times you're going to go to the grocery store, you're going to pick up a package of, for example, heavy cream, and it's going to say zero carbs. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that there is less than one carb in a tablespoon of heavy cream. Yeah. So what I do when I'm looking at what we're going to eat, anytime it's, for example, a dairy product, yes, I always calculate that there's one carb in it. A lot of times it's only a half a car, but I'd always rather overestimate it than right. underestimate it. Yeah. So if you go and, for example, buy the Aldi's heavy cream, the label says zero carbs. Yes. But if you go buy Land O'Lakes heavy cream, it says one carb. It's because what they chose to put on a nutrition label, because we need to remember that they get to put zero if it's less than one. 
So to kind of piggyback with that is if I am a food addict and I am, when I'm putting my day into my fitness pal or some other app, I may want to use the brand that says I get have no carbs so that I can just kind of like fool myself and, and, and see it on uh, the screen that I had less carbs than I actually did. But I need to be conscious of the fact that I'm really just cheating myself. I'm yeah. lying to myself and I'm not doing myself any favor by underestimating these carbs. And I used to do that. I would go and buy like, for example, I would buy the specifically the Aldi's heavy cream because it said zero carbs yeah. and then make my recipe that used a half a cup of that heavy cream. And when I put it into my fitness pal, it's like, well, you had zero carbs in this dish, but this dish really had four carbohydrates. Yeah. So I've now found that I like to look for the one that maybe has the correct nutritional label or has that one carb registering so that when I plug it into my fitness pal, it's registering that I've had some carbs. Yeah. So then you won't be frustrated when you don't have the results you want. Right. Like just and be aware. be honest with yourself. So a lot of times people make that mistake, you know. I got a standard 20 net carbs, but you're forgetting that there is a carb in an egg. So if you ate five eggs, you've probably eaten at least three carbs. You know, again, it registers as a zero. So even if you register it or count it as half a carb, you're doing yourself a better service. Yeah. You know, just make sure you're adding all of that stuff up. And I think actually another one to go with that is to be very um, conscious of how much you're adding like condiment wise to things. So even if you start to get like the ketchup that is would be a keto free ketchup or barbecue sauce, that's like the Walden Farms barbecue sauce where they're saying, oh, well, this is less carbs or no carbs or something. Just be conscious about how much is that a crutch for you? Like you were used to, hey, I had to drench ketchup over every burger. So, you know, can you get away with less and less of that? Be be aware. It's kind of like sweets. Is it a crutch that you're adding so much extra stuff to it, dipping sauce and things like that, um, that maybe are carby tomato sauce that you don't need? Yeah. The next biggest mistake I think people make is not using a food tracker, at least in the beginning. I would like to stay in the dark and lie to myself, though. That would be better. That would work better for me. The bottom line is when it comes down to getting started, this is a completely different way of eating than you're used to. So using a food tracker is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to make you accountable. Mm -hmm. right? It's going to allow you to be able to really look at what are you eating so you can be honest with yourself like you were talking about. It's not a bad thing. Accountability is good. Yeah. Now, the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to help you to learn what the ratios of fat to protein are in foods. And we yeah. don't track our foods every day anymore like we used to because we've kind of learned like looking at a nutrition label, try to keep your fat either equal with protein or higher than protein on the fat grams and then I kind yeah. of know. But I didn't know that at the beginning. And when I first got started and I was tracking every single thing, it shocked me because like I grew up with eating boneless, skinless chicken breast, right? Yes. That was the healthy option, boneless, skinless chicken right. breast. Well, I was running into problems and luckily I was able to correct it right away because I was food tracking because I didn't know like eating five ounces of boneless, skinless chicken breast consumed like 80% of the protein I was supposed to eat for the day. That is crazy. So now at the end of the day, I'm looking at it going, what do I do? I've consumed all my calories, mm -hmm. but I'm only at like 50% fat or worse. There were times where I was at like 30% fat, but I didn't have room for the fat calories. Right. So yeah, that would be super frustrating. So using that food tracker really will help you become successful. And I think the biggest mistake that people make when they get started on keto is not meal prepping. Yes, that is a recipe for disaster because it causes you to fall back on bad habits and it puts you in a state of like, I've got to eat right now, what am I going to do? And then you, you will just go back to some of the bad, poor eating choices. Yeah, because the bottom line is, there are not a lot of pre-made foods that you can go to the grocery store and purchase on keto. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily just meal prepping, like having your entire meal prepped ahead of time, yeah. which we find really benefits us, but always having something in your refrigerator, something that you can grab 
for a quick and easy meal, like if you didn't have time to cook. Mm -hmm. So meal prepping and meal planning, planning out ahead of time so that you can exactly back to using my fitness pal, know are you consuming the right ratios? Yeah. So I think a big mistake people make is not meal prepping and not meal planning. Yeah. And that's going to save you time and it's going to save you money because you're not shopping out of desperation either. Yes. And if you can meal prep at, at off times of the day, that's awesome too. That would eliminate having to be like prepping food with children running beneath your feet. Like when it's time to spend time with the kids, you can actually do that. Spend time with the kids and yes. not be trying to do 50 things at once. So that's our video for today. Hopefully these uh, little tips help you to not make the same mistakes that we made when we first got started. I hope so. So if you like what you're seeing, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Hit the little bell icon and every time we have a new idea, you will be alerted to our video upload. Until next time. Bye. Bye.